Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm the dog of Elazian coming up in today's newscast. After the contentious Knesset vote for the Judicial Selection Committee, what's in store for the proposed legal reforms? A New York Times report provides new details on a potential deal between the United States and the Iranian regime. Is an agreement imminent? And stay tuned for ILTV's Wine of the Week with Vitkin Winery. Violent clashes erupted in Nablus overnight after IDF forces entered the city to demolish the home of a Palestinian terrorist. The army torn down the house of Osama Tawil, one of the terrorists who murdered IDF Staff Sergeant Ido Baruch last October. ILTV's Steve Leibovitz reports. Armed gunmen fired at the soldiers and threw an explosive device as the forces entered Nablus. The army first responded with crowd dispersal methods before resorting to live fire and a gunfight ensued. Several Palestinians were wounded, and at least one man was killed in the exchange of fire. The army demolished the home of Osama Tawil, one of the terrorists who murdered IDF Staff Sergeant Ido Baruch last October. Baruch was shot and killed near Shave Shomron in northern Samaria. The Shin Bet, together with the IDF, located the apartment where the terrorists were hiding. Tawil was arrested in February in a military operation in Nablus in which three Palestinians were killed. Last week, Israeli forces entered Ramallah and demolished the home of the terrorists behind the November Jerusalem bus stop bombings. In the ensuing clashes, at least three Palestinians were injured by Israeli fire. And never a dull moment in Israeli politics, as was evidenced by Wednesday's turbulent Knesset vote for the appointment of representatives to the powerful Judicial Selection Committee, responsible for appointing judges to Israel's civilian courts. What exactly took place in the Knesset and what is the status of negotiations over the legal reforms? All the answers in the following report. The Israeli Knesset is still reeling from the dramatic events of Wednesday's vote for the parliamentarian appointments to the Judicial Selection Committee. Opposition Representative Yesh Atid M.K. Karin El Haral was ultimately elected to the committee in a vote of 58 to 56, with at least four coalition members voting for her appointment in the anonymous ballot, against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's request. Netanyahu had called to oppose all candidates so that no members of parliament would be chosen for the committee. This in an effort to postpone the vote by an additional 30 days to provide more time to negotiate with opposition parties. Additionally, Likud MK Tali Gottlieb further complicated matters when she refused to withdraw her nomination for the post, compromising the endeavor. In the end, she received only 15 votes in her favor. The coalition representative to the committee will now be elected in a repeat election that must be held within 30 days. Yet despite the opposition securing their appointment to the committee, opposition leaders Yair Lapid of Yeshatid and Benny Gantz of National Unity held a press conference following the vote and said they were suspending negotiations at the president's residence. עכשיו הוא רמאי וחלש. הוועדה לא הוקמה, האיום על הדמוקרטיה לא הוסר. נתניהו ידע בדיוק את ההשלכות. הן הובהרו לו בידי הנשיא וגם בידינו. בלי ועדה לבחירת שופטים לא נגיע לבית הנשיא. אין ועדה, אין שיחות. Despite their accusations, Netanyahu's political maneuvering actually helped to uphold the status quo, rather than appointing two coalition MKs to the committee as the more right-wing elements of his coalition demanded. Netanyahu, in turn, accused the opposition of not taking the negotiations seriously. And so now, while the negotiations at the president's residence over the judicial reforms are on hold, after Wednesday's results, there is still hope that a widespread consensus is still within reach. And joining us now with more on the aftermath of the Knesset vote is Alex Trayman, JNS Jerusalem Bureau Chief. Thanks for joining us. 
Thanks so much, Lidar. So it was really a roller coaster of a day yesterday, uh, but in the end, the opposition got its nominee on the Judicial Selection Committee, and yet Gantz and Lapid are halting negotiations at the president's residence. I mean, what is your take on this chain of events? Well, first of all, the opposition got exactly what they wanted, which was Karina Harar to be appointed uh, to the committee and not to break the status quo that you mentioned of having one member of the coalition and one member of the opposition on the judicial selection panel. So they got what they wanted. What they didn't get was the member from the coalition. And uh, even though no member from the coalition was selected in yesterday's vote, now that El Harar is guaranteed a seat on the panel, it is quite likely that within the next coming days, uh, certainly within the next 30 days, a new vote for the uh, final member of the committee will be selected. And then the negotiations at the president's residence should continue. Uh, the very question is whether or not uh, Lapid and Benny Gantz and the members of the opposition want to reach any kind of compromise on judicial reform whatsoever. It appears as though they're looking for every uh, potential hook to get out of the negotiations and to blame the failure of the negotiations on Netanyahu. So is this essentially political posturing or is this sort of another attempt to perhaps put pressure on the prime minister and on the coalition? Well, the opposition made demands that El Harar would be appointed. They've, they've gotten their demand right now and they will continue to make demands. Uh, they may not have any incentives to reach a compromise on the issue of judicial reform. They do not want the judicial system to be changed in any sort of meaningful way whatsoever, as they've made clear by bringing hundreds of thousands of people out into the streets and effectively shutting down Israeli society during those protests. Um, there's going to be a lot of political posturing. We saw plenty of political posturing yesterday between uh, but by the opposition, also by Netanyahu. A lot of that posturing had nothing to do with whether or not El Harar would get onto the committee, but rather which member of the coalition would be appointed. Uh, you mentioned that Tali Gottlieb, a member of the Likud party, uh, refused to withdraw her candidacy at the end. The, this was important because Netanyahu had actually promised that seat to a member of the Otzma Yudit party led by Itamar Ben-Gvir, that was Yitzhak Kreuzer, and because the ballot was a secret ballot, if there were three candidates on the ballot at the time of the vote, uh, Netanyahu would not be able to ensure coalition discipline and ensure that El Harar and Kreuzer were the two selected. So what he did at the last moment was to withdraw Kreuzer's candidacy and instructed uh, members of his coalition to vote against the member of his own party, Tali Ghalib, and also to vote against El Harar, but there are rumors that it was actually Netanyahu himself who instructed several members of his own coalition to vote in favor of El Harar to ensure that she did in fact get on the committee and prevent another round of uh, protests in the streets. So uh, really a, a little bit of chaos going on. You know, now Netanyahu has been facing tremendous pressure, uh, both from within his coalition and of course from the opposition. Many analysts uh, are saying that the Knesset vote uh, has revealed that Netanyahu has sort of lost control of his own coalition. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, I think that that's the narrative that's being established because the entire point of the protest movement uh, may have less to do with judicial reform and much more to do with uh, cracking Netanyahu's government. And there are continued um, reports that Netanyahu's coalition is cracking. That is that is the desired result, of course. I think that what happened yesterday, while it was dramatic in the moment, and while all of the media in Israel is reporting on the, the various ins and outs of the political posturing that took place, uh, the actual results of the event prove that the incident is going to be probably inconsequential. And uh, I don't think it, it really does uh, put a dent either in Netanyahu's coalition or in the efforts to reach a compromise at the president's residence on judicial reform. And so is there any consensus now uh, on when the next vote is set to take place and who the coalition will be putting forward as its nominee? Well, the vote has to take place within the next 30 days. Uh, it's probably in Netanyahu's benefit to conduct that vote as fast as possible so that he can go back to the president and the opposition and say that, you know, the delay of a couple of days really doesn't matter very much. And the question is, who will be the candidate uh, for that if now that El Harar is already on the panel? And Netanyahu has already avoided a crisis with the opposition. 
if Gottlieb and Kreuzer uh, decide both or other candidates to go on to the, the ballot for the for the final member uh, for the final selection member of the committee. Netanyahu can instruct his coalition who he wants them to vote for. And if they follow the discipline, then it could very well be Kreuzer who winds up getting the the slot, which would be in line with Netanyahu's promise to Itamar ben during the coalition negotiations. All right. Well, as we said, never a dull moment in Israeli politics. Alex Trayman, thank you so much for your analysis today. Thanks, Lidar.